So ASUS sent us their ASUS Dual 4070 Super for review. Of course, we're gonna be reviewing it, we're gonna be playing games, we're gonna be testing it, all to answer the question, is this the best 1440p GPU out there? I'm Rocky the Programmer and this is the ASUS Dual 4070 Super review. So our standard disclaimer, ASUS did send us this review unit, but they do not have a say in the content or the verdict for this review. So for this 4000 series, the Super variant is now back, which has been notably absent during the 3000 series. These Super variants are an upgrade or an uptick in terms of performance compared to the base variants of the cards, but not as much as the TI versions. These are a good in-between cards that offer better performance while also being slightly cheaper than the TI variants. And that is mostly the same for the 4070 Super. So for the specs, I'm going to be flashing the numbers on the screen right now. And we will be comparing it to the 4070 base version. It was released on January 17, 2024. It is the same TSMC process. And it's also 12 gigabytes of VRAM at 21 gigabits per second, GDDR6X memory, and the same memory bus width at 192 bits. Where it differs, however, is on the core configuration. It has more compute cores, tensor cores, which edges it slightly closer to the 4070 Ti version. What's different also than the 4070 base version is the L2 cache of 48 MB and a slight 20 watt total board power uptick. For this ASUS Dual specifically, it has Axial Tech fan design that features a smaller fan hub that facilitates longer blades and a barrier ring that increases downward air pressure. It's also a 2.56 slot design of card. It boasts a 0 dB technology that lets you enjoy in light gaming in relative silence. Also, the fans are dual ball bearing fans that they say are going to last twice as long as sleeve bearing designs. Also, it features the Auto Extreme Precision automated manufacturing for higher reliability. And of course, Asus's own software suite to manage and control the GPU. Another notable difference is the presence of the 12 volt high power connector. While the power requirements and the recommended PSU wattage is the same as the 4070 base version, it does feature the 16 pin connector. But no need to worry, Asus is bundling this with the adapter that takes two 8 pin. PCIe connectors from your PSU. So the moment you've been waiting for, the benchmarks and the tests. So for this review, I use my personal system which features a 7800X 3D, 32GB of DDR5 RAM at 6000MHz, 1TB of NVMe PCIe Gen 4 SSD, and 750W inside an NR200P Max. All Windows updates and also the NVIDIA GPU driver is the latest at the time of recording. And all of the games here are tested at 1440p at the absolute ultra maximum highest settings. So for this, we're also going to be showing the results for the 4070 and the 4070 Ti. And looking at the average FPS, it is extremely close to the 4070 Ti, while being 15 to 20% faster than the 4070 base model. For Cyberpunk, they're basically the same. We use the ultra highest settings, ray tracing at cycle, but path tracing off. And the average FPS is basically identical at this point. It manages this while also being around 40 watts lower in terms of power usage. We can also see similar results for Diablo 4 and Red Dead Redemption. One thing to note, however, is that at Red Dead Redemption, there's quite a not so insignificant difference in terms of the 1% lows, which means the 4070 Ti does offer a slightly smoother experience, at least for this title. For the 4070 base model, it remains to be 15 to 20 FPS behind at some scenes, but on average, it is around 20% slower. Looking at synthetic benchmarks, at time spy, it is just around 2,000 lower than the 4070 Ti. Again, all of this performance while pulling significantly less power. And we still haven't talked about DLSS yet. Enabling DLSS balance configuration, and with DLSS 3 frame generation, we can see that even greater performance. For Cyberpunk, it's an almost 100 FPS more, similar to Diablo 4. And interestingly, for Red Dead Redemption 2, it even pulls ahead of the 4070 Ti. But still, there's something about that game. For some reason, the 1% lows for the 4070 Super is a bit low. Now, in terms of cooling, the ASUS Dual Line proves to be a very solid design, maintaining a peak temperature of 70 degrees across all tests. And again, mind you, this is inside an ITX case with an ambient temperature of 25 degrees. And during the tests, even at 100% utilization, there wasn't a significant noise coming from the GPU. 
So kudos to Asus. So what should we make of all of this? I think Nvidia made a GPU that is too good. What I mean by that is, in terms of all the performance and the tests, I would describe this GPU as a slightly lower powered 4070 Ti for the price of a 4070. Therefore, eliminating any considerations you should make to buy either of those cards, the 4070 and the 4070 Ti. If you're in this budget range, if you're in this performance range at 1440p with gaming in mind, you don't mind the 12 gigabytes VRAM only, this is the card to get. The closest in terms of cost to performance ratio is the 7800 XT. And while we were not able to test that for this review, extrapolating the results from other sources makes the 7800 XT trade punches with the 4070 Super at best or slightly worse. And that is of course just pure raster performance. We're not talking about ray tracing, or any upscaling technologies. Currently, at the time of this review, DLSS is still the superior upscaling technology. While FSR is still trying to catch up with DLSS, it's still not as good fidelity-wise. As for the specific ASUS card, ASUS proves to be a solid brand, especially with this line, the dual line, which proves to be a very solid choice if you just need a base card. And frankly, at this performance and price point, you really do not need the higher end models. The dual line is a solid choice. It fits basically in any configuration that you could think of, while also sporting an interesting and an honest aesthetic. So in conclusion, I think Nvidia accidentally turned off their greed meter and actually produced a good value card with the 4070 Super. It will play all the AAA games that you can throw at it at the highest maximum settings, while also having access to Nvidia's latest technologies like ray tracing, and the LSS. And if you're looking for a solid, good-performing GPU, the ASUS Dual is a solid choice. Thank you for watching.